Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a few tips and tricks that are going to speed up AutoCAD for you. Now this isn't necessarily about drawing faster or designing faster but more about getting the drawings you have and the software to run a little smoother especially if you're running into slowdowns or hiccups. A few of these could be causing it and I'm going to show you exactly how to fix them. Before we jump in, make sure you check out my AutoCAD newsletter if you haven't signed up already. It's free. You can sign up up above and down below at cadintentions.com slash sign up. All right, let's jump right into today's video. First up, maybe one of the most common and straightforward ways to clean up our drawings so they start running quicker. This is the purge command. You can simply type in purge, P-U-R-G-E, and hit enter to open up the dialog box. From within here, you're going to be able to remove or purge objects, items, styles, materials, line types, layers, anything that's not being used in your drawings. This is going to remove it so that when you save it, you've got a clean, simple drawing that only contains the objects, styles, and settings that are required for that drawing. Now, it is a good practice to purge occasionally throughout your drawing process, but where this comes in very handy is when you're completed your design and you're not gonna need any more layers, styles, line types, then is a good time to purge your drawing and save it. Now, this is gonna remove everything that's unneeded and keep just the drawing and what's required to recreate it. And this is also a great thing to do before you send your files off to a client or a fellow consultant. This is going to remove all those unused objects, but more importantly, it'll remove things that may be part of your standards and your templates that you don't necessarily want to send off to someone else. So in this purge menu, you're going to be able to hit the check mark here to automatically check everything. You can also just click purge all, and this is going to purge everything in the drawing, as I mentioned, that's not being used. Now you can see here there's a few set uh, options that you can choose from like confirming each item that's going to be purged. I wouldn't recommend selecting that unless you really are interested in each thing that's getting removed. Um, and then purging nested items is also a good idea. This would be items within items like things within groups and blocks that may be unneeded in the drawing. Uh, you can also check on to remove orphan data. That would be data that the uh, parent objects or blocks have been removed. That's a good idea as well. And zero length geometry, that would be little bits and pieces of objects that may have been left over from trimming and breaking that you can't even see in the drawing, but they're just sitting there in the background. Now you can also double check what's getting removed by hitting the plus signs on the left here. And you'll see all the unused layers in this case. Layers is a great one to purge at the end. This is going to get rid of all of those layers you didn't use. Same as table styles, textiles, any of that kind of stuff. Clicking purge all is now going to remove all of that automatically from your drawing. So when I close this, you can see I've only got a handful of layers now instead of 50 or 60 that I may start my drawing with. And that's going to be a great and simple way to start speeding up your drawing right off the bat. Now, another great way to clean up a drawing is to use the overkill command. Now, overkill is going to remove objects that are on top of each other, but unnecessary. So it's going to ask once I've typed in overkill and hit enter to select my objects. The trick here is to select all by typing in all and hit enter. Hitting enter again is going to bring up the delete duplicate objects dialog box here. And that's all overkill is going to do. It's going to remove everything that is over top of another object or below it. Uh, you can, again, play with the settings here. If you just leave this to default, it's only going to remove things that are directly copied or duplicated from an object above it, basically. Um, you can, again, play with these settings or choose properties which you want to ignore, which can be helpful if you've got duplicates for a reason on, say, different layers. That could be one that you can play with, but we're just going to hit OK here. And you can see that six duplicates were deleted and 85 overlapping objects or segments were deleted. Now, between those two options, we've gotten rid of almost 200 different objects between the layers and duplicates, and the drawing hasn't even changed. This is a great example of how so much extra clutter and objects can slow down your drawings. If you've been working on a drawing or if it's a very large scale drawing, like say an entire sub development, uh, subdivision development or plot plans or 
a huge floor plan, architectural plan. This is just a single uh, floor layout. Larger projects like entire, say, apartment buildings or subdivision plans or huge surveys can gather thousands of excess objects. That is a great way to save space and time when working within the drawing. Next up is a quick and simple command that I think many of you are going to find a benefit, and that is the whip thread command. And basically this is going to turn on or enable AutoCAD to use multi-threading or multiple processors. This can help it split the workload when working with large drawing sets, especially if you're doing things with like contours or survey points, as I mentioned, anything that's going to take up a large space and regen a lot of data. Typing in whip thread, W-H-I-P-T-H-R-E-A-D, whip thread, and changing that value to either uh, one, two, or three, depending on the settings you'd like. Now for the simple breakdown, a zero setting is going to turn off the multi-threading option. A one setting is going to use multi-threading for regen, and that's going to be carried out by multiple processors. Number two is going to redraw only, so it's only going to use multiple processors for regen or redraws when zooming in and out, moving around your project. Or three is going to use multiple processors whenever, whenever possible for regen and redraw. Now, this isn't going to save you a ton of time, but in those little instances where you might get some lagging when it's redrawing and processing, this is a great way to help with that. Next up, we've got one that I activate or change on almost every new install of AutoCAD that I work with, and that is the file tab preview setting or variable. I always turn this one off because I just don't like this file tab preview. So when you hover over the tabs up above, you get these little previews of each model and layout space tab. Now, this is great in theory, but I find myself accidentally hovering over these or hitting them as I go up to the ribbon occasionally. And when you're dealing with very large or complicated designs and drawings, if you hover over one of your other drawings that's not open, it can lag, freeze, or accidentally switch you to that one while you're really just trying to activate a command from up on the ribbon. I find this happens more often than I'd like, so I typically will turn off this preview, and you can do that by typing in file tab preview and hitting enter and changing that, sen that setting to zero to turn it off. And once you've done that, you'll see that the file tab previews don't show up. And I find that this little dropdown doesn't activate nearly as often. And it also doesn't require the processing power to render that little preview of your other files. Next up, another great way to speed up the software and run into less little lags along the way when you're designing is to turn off the snap options when you don't need them. So you can turn snap on and off by tapping F3 and that's what I'll tend to do is I'll just turn it off completely if I'm not needing it so I'm not accidentally snapping to things when I'm moving objects or drawing unless I need to and when I need it I'll tap F3 to turn the snaps back on. Now another way to help with these uh, not arbitrarily snapping when you don't want them is to click the little fly out button here and only turn on these snaps that you're actually needing things like center if you don't need it should be turned off intersections extensions all of these object snap options that will accidentally snap things to places that you're not wanting like you can see when I hover around it's snapping to all the edges but also extensions and it can be a little glitchy when you've got hundreds or thousands of lines and objects in a drawing and if it's already running a little slow having to process and snap to each of these is a huge suck so using the F3 to turn it on and off only when needed and limiting the snaps you've actually got turned on when it is on is a great way to speed up AutoCAD. Similarly, I almost always leave the 3D snap off, but if you've got that on, that's one you definitely want to want to turn off. Even if you're working in 3D, only turning it on when necessary is the best way to work with that one since it will slow things down and when you're snapping to different objects in the Z coordinates, that can really lag things, especially when you're copying them around in your drawing.
Now, hopefully you've picked up a ton of great tips in the last five minutes or so. These are gonna save you hours of time when working with the software, so it's definitely worth implementing all or as many of them as you can. As well, other great tips typically include things like splitting out the objects in your drawings into multiple different XRefs and drawings. Not only is this going to make them easier to edit for other users so that multiple people can be working on the project at once, but it also gets this line work out of your main base drawing and into separate ones, breaking things up into smaller drawings called XRefs and then referencing them into your final drawing is the better way to go for most projects. It's going to allow you smaller separate CAD files and prevent things like not having the ability to have multiple people working on the, the same project as well as a bit of redundancy in case you were to ever lose any one file due to corruption you've got the other xrefs that make it up and it's typically not as much time lost. If you like today's video and you haven't checked it out already make sure you take a look at my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course where I outline everything from creating templates and getting set up in AutoCAD, all the way to the workflows needed to create things like XRefs, plans, layouts, uh, details, text, annotative text, dimensions, as well as plotting and setting up your layouts and viewports and packaging things up to send all of your files off to clients. You can get that course and all the videos and downloads included by going to the link up above and down below and it's discounted using those for viewers such as yourself. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Have a good one. Cheers.